All right, so I spent the last three days trying to cut a hole in the ground and it looks like trash. I'm super frustrated and I hate everything and I hate everyone, but I did come across this interesting technique with Unity Shader Graph. It's called a grab pass. This allows you to get the pixels from behind an object and then you can distort that object's UVs to distort your view of the real world. So I think this is a really cool effect in AR. It's super quick and easy to get set up. So I'm gonna walk you through how to do that today with Unity Shader Graph and the Universal Render Pipeline. And then we're also gonna walk through this shader that I made that allows you to touch and distort an object at different positions. So yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go to github.com slash third Aurora and go to repositories. And then the newest one we have on there is this grab pass shader graph. So click this and um, download this zip and then open it up in Unity. First thing we're gonna do is figure out how to use this grab pass technique. So if you go to the assets folder, Inside, you're gonna see scenes, and it's got the main scene and a test scene. So, so far, all we care about is this test scene. Um, let's actually Command D and duplicate this, and then we'll just call this, um, I don't know, pass test. And then let's actually make another folder in the assets folder. Um, we're just gonna call this test, and we're gonna put all our test stuff into this folder. So, find our pass test scene and put this into our test folder. Cool, and then we're also gonna need to create a material. Let's call this pass. And then we're gonna need to create a shader graph. Let's see, shader, let's go unlit graph and just call this pass. Okay, so inside this pass test scene, uh, what we have currently is gonna be that portal that I showed you in the demo. Let's just move the screen object out of this and delete the portal. So we should just have like a flat quad that renders in front of the camera view. Oh yeah, remove this cut hole script. So now on our screen object, let's put this pass material on it. And then from this pass material, let's set it to this shader graphs, um, pass shader graph. So if you click play, you'll see that this test scene has a camera texture uh, child to the main camera. So you see the background texture here and then on our quad, we have a blank material so it's all white. So that's what we want. Now, the first step to get this um, grab pass texture working is you have to go into rendering and on your uh, universal render pipeline asset, you have to make sure this opaque texture is checked. So make sure that is checked on and then we can go back to our test folder and we can open up this pass shader graph. Now, when we open this pass shader in the shader graph, the first thing we need to make sure to do is change the master node from surface opaque to transparent. That'll allow us to see everything. Now there's two ways to do this grab pass texture. So the first way is if you use a scene color node and then you can map this directly to the color value but we're not gonna be able to see anything in the editor if there's no distortion. You won't be able to tell it's there. So the best way that I know to demonstrate this is use a posturize node in between and then we can map this to the in and then map that out to the color. Now, if we save this and preview it, we should be able to see something. Yeah, so you see this is working as intended. If we go to the scene view, you'll see that the screen is taking the pixels of everything that's underneath of it and saving it um, in this object's texture here. Okay, now the second way to do this is with this camera opaque texture technique. So what we're gonna do is delete this scene color node, and then here we're gonna add a property, texture 2D, and we're gonna call this underscore camera opaque texture and then copy this and put this down in the reference field here and then uncheck exposed and then we can drag this into the scene here and then we're going to create another node and that's going to be sample texture 2d drag this into the texture slot drag the colors to the in of the posturize and then let's create another node and this is going to be screen position and then all you have to do is map these uh, screen position UV to the UV slot here. And then this should do the same thing as that scene color node. Okay, so yeah, this looks good. Now I am not 100% sure about the difference between these two techniques. Both seem to work well. Uh, both seem to work well on mobile. And I tried to do research and figure out which technique is the more Unity accepted way and I have no idea. So if anyone knows, definitely let me know down in the comments. Okay, so now that we have this texture working, you could follow any other shader graph tutorial and distort these UVs as you would any other texture and come up with some pretty interesting effects. So let me just run, run you through one effect that I did. So if you get on here to the materials folder, you'll see this um, screen shader graph. 
So inside here is what I used for that demo in the beginning of the video. So this thing basically uses some different noise techniques to modify the UVs of that um, camera opaque texture. And then down here, I'm using a twirl node that I have exposed a twirl center and a swirl strength. And this is what I modify from C sharp. So I get the click position on the object and then I pass it into the shader right here. And that's what allows you to do that ripple effect at the different screen positions. Okay, so now if you go to this uh, test scene and you open it up and you click play, you can see this shader in action, okay? So if we go to this screen object, we're gonna have to modify a few values here. The, the values that it has by default are what seem to look the best in AR mode, but for now we might wanna up, up to smooth this to like 0.3 and then the Fresnel, let's bring it to like, I don't know, whatever, negative 0.07, that looks pretty good here. So yeah, you can see that wherever you touch on the shader, uh, it's gonna create the ripple, ripple effect at that position. So let's actually copy these material properties, unclick play mode, and then let's paste these material properties back in so they get saved here. But now on the screen object, you'll see that it has a cut hole script. So this is what is passing the screen position to the shader. So if we open this up, uh, you'll notice that this object has a mesh collider on it. So these uh, on mouse drag, on mouse down, on mouse up, these are all gonna get called when a mouse click is detected over the object. So that's gonna call position swirl to touch. But now, so we know a touch has been detected, but we need to get the actual touch position that we can send to the shader and do something meaningful. So first of all, we pass, we do a ray cast with the mouse position and that gets us this hit point, which is the world position of the touch on the object. So then we can convert that from world space to local space. And then the tricky part here is converting it to a meaningful value that we can use in the shader. So luckily that uh, twirl node has a center position that is mapped from like negative 0.5 to 0.5. And that maps pretty easily to the UVs of this uh, quad. So this is a very simple example. So here we can just literally add 0.5 and that'll map to that uh, twirl value, or, yeah, twirl value. But if this was like a cube or a circle or something, I wouldn't even know to how. To, I wouldn't even know how to begin to do that conversion. So this is all we got for now. Just really simple example on a quad. Now the last thing about this project is um, there is a the main scene is like an AR foundation demo scene. This just allows you to place that kind of portal window thing from the intro at a position in the real world. And um, if you haven't followed along with any of the other videos before, all this main scene does here is that it allows you to place an object at a screen position once the planes are detected. And then there is a invisible toggle here in the top left of the screen. Let's see if we can make this visible here. So yeah, this invisible toggle, top left of the screen, this just allows you to um, toggle on and off the planes. So in this case, if you toggle on the planes, then you can click on the planes to place this portal window and then uncheck the toggle for everything to go away. All right, so that's it. That's all I got for today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one and let me know in the comments what you guys want to see in the next video. So with that, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.